Welcome to section 4. Share, collaborate and maximize productivity with source code management. Branches and tags. In this video, we are going to look at how to create branch, how to create tag, how we can change our default branch, what are push rules and how can we delay branches and tags. Okay. Let's create our first branch. There are two options to do this. We can do this from a web interface, or we can do it in the terminal and push our new branch to GitLab. Let's go to Branches by selecting Branches in Repository menu on the left side. Select New Branch on the right side and give our branch a name. You can see that our branches should not contain any spaces. You can see that our first branch is created. From the terminal, we can from the terminal we can create new branch by writing GitLab checkout minus B and branch name. We also switch to that branch. Now we can push it. If we once again go to our branches menu, we'll see both new branches there. Now let's take a look what options do we have with our branches. Select repository from our settings menu. First, we can change our default branch. Let's change to packed first branch test. By default, default branch is always set to master, but you can select any other branch you want. Default branch is affected by issue closing pattern, which means that all issue will be closed when a merge request are merged to the default branch. Default branch is also protected against accidental deletion. Great. Now let's take a look at push rules. Push rules are restrictions for our users what to push and how to push. So let's take a look. We can set that user can only push to this repository with verified emails. This means that commits should have correct emails in them. We can reject unsigned commits. We can prevent users from deleting tags via git push. We can check whether author is GitLab user. We can prevent committing secrets to git. Secret GitLab has a short list of secret files that usually contain some passwords, so we can prevent pushing them to repository. We can also limit commit messages and what should they contain, for example, some Jira issues or something like that. We can also prevent something from Git messages, for example, like SSH or something like that, like in the example here. We can limit our branch names so we can set that our branch should always start with feature or fix, like here in the example. We can limit our commit authors to only have emails from our company, for example. This would prevent some users to accidentally commit from their personal emails. We can prohibit some file names, something that usually doesn't belong to Git, so some jars or exe files and we can set our maximum file size. Let's take a look at branch names. Let's set this to feature release like this and save it. OK, now let's try to create a new branch that is different from what we specified. Let's go to branches again in our repository menu on the left side.
you can see that our branch does not follow the pattern here. If we write feature slash then less path branch, it should work. You can see if we go to our branches menu again that our previously created branches were not affected. Great! Now let's create a tag by selecting tags from the repository menu on the left side. Like said here, tags are specific points in history and are usually not changed. We need to set tag name, select from which branch name, tag or commit we should create this tag, optionally set a message and write a release note. Hey, here's our first tag. We can delete tag by selecting delete tag button. In this video, we started to look at branches and tags.